Thank you. Yesterday, President Trump issued an executive order that undermines the protection of dozens of our national monuments that were established over the past two decades by three different presidents. In continuing his administration's war on our public lands, President Trump and Secretary of Interior Zinke have attacked one of our nation's most prized conservation laws, the Antiquities Act, which gives the president the authority to protect our national important lands and waters of designation as national monuments. In the 100 years since the Antiquities Act was created and signed into law by President Teddy Roosevelt, 16 presidents, eight Republicans, and eight Democrats have used this law's authority to designate over 150 national monuments. Over 100 years of conservation is trying to be undone in just a few days by President Trump. Many of our nation's iconic national parks were first protected by using the authority of the Antiquities Act, including the Grand Canyon, Acadia, Glacier Bay, Joshua Tree, Zion, in my home state of Washington, Mount Olympus National Monument, and which later became Olympic National Park. So no doubt, presidents of both parties have used the Antiquities Act to preserve the most beautiful places in our country. However, President Trump, appears to be very uninformed on the history or the importance of the Antiquities Act. In his remarks, signing the executive order yesterday, he described the designation of national monuments as, quote, egregious use of federal power, end quote, and vowed that he would, quote, give the power back to the states, end quotes. He truly does not understand the Antiquities Act, nor does he appreciate the bold leadership of all of those presidents, as I mentioned, both Democrats and Republicans, over a period of time, eight Republicans and eight Democrats, who have used this authority in the appropriate ways to preserve for all Americans future and those in the past who've joined, who have enjoyed these beautiful places to preserve for us access to public lands. I can't tell you how important access to public lands is for school children, for our returning veterans, for our families, for hunter, for fishermen, for hikers. Putting the Antiquities Act and the millions of acres that have been chosen to be placed there back into the hands of a few who are more aligned with special interest to try to open these up to oil and gas exploration is the antithesis of what the Antiquities Act was all about. So we plan to continue to emphasize how wrong the president's executive order is. First and foremost, in the executive order, the president uh, and the Secretary of Interior are now to designate and review the expansion of designations under the Antiquities Act, where the secretary deems that the designation of expansion was made without a adequate public comment or coordination with relevant stakeholders. That literally gives the Secretary of Interior broad authority to look at all the land that has previously been designated and potentially open it up to saying that they are going to try to reverse that. Many, uh, many of the discussions have been made about the last 20 years of designation, some unbelievable beautiful places of America that are so special. The Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument in Utah, that was 1.7 million acres. The Grand Canyon Parashant National Monument in Arizona. The Giant Sequoia National Monument in California. The Canyon of Ancient National Monuments in Colorado. I know my colleague, uh, Senator Bennett from Colorado, was speaking earlier. Hanford Reach Monument in Washington, 195,000 acres. The Ironwood Forest National Monument in Arizona. The Vermilion Cliffs Monument in Arizona. The Carrizo Plain, I'm sorry, the Carrizo Plain National Monument in California. The Serrano Desert Monument in Arizona. The Upper Missouri River Breaks National Monument in Montana. The Rio Grande del Norte National Monument in New Mexico that my colleague Senator Heinrich worked so hard on. The uh, uh, Oregon Monuments Desert Peak National Monument. The San Gabriel Mountains National Monument in California. The uh, 
Berryessa Snow Mountain National Monument in California, the Basin and Range Monument in Nevada, the Mojave Trails National Monument in California, the Sand to Snow National Monument in California, Bears Ears, as I've mentioned, in Utah, and the Gold Butte National Monument in Nevada. So that sounds like a lot of designation that we had done over the last 20 years. We were very judicious about that designation. It took lots of public comment, lots of community meetings, lots of scientific analysis about the preservations of these areas. And the end result is that we have, for these generations and future generations, created outdoor public lands that are in our national interests. This has been so important to us as a nation, as I said, places like the Grand Canyon, places like Olympic National Park in my state, many places have created what has become an outdoor recreation economy. That outdoor recreation economy is now over $800 billion of annual revenue and dwarfs what the oil and gas industry represent as an economy of the future. In fact, this industry sector is on par to compete with other large sectors of our economy, the financial service sector and the healthcare sector. So why are we taking away the very tool that has launched so much outdoor activity and a burgeoning job economy with seven million outdoor industry workers? Why are we taking away what has been the priority and designation of past presidents and trying to return them because someone doesn't understand what the Antiquities Act is all about. So in addition to those large monuments that I just mentioned, also under review will be a group of other monuments that were marine national monuments. Yes, according to this definition that I mentioned earlier, Secretary Zinke could in fact review all of these monuments. In fact, I noticed there were several people at the president's signing who represented some of these monuments. So I don't know if they are urging the president to remove their areas, but it raises great concern about how important these marine monuments have been. There is a marine national monument in the Hawaiian Islands that was done in 2006, a World War II valor in the Pacific National Monument also in Hawaii, the Rose Atoll National Monument in America, Samoa, the Pacific Remote Island National Monument, again in Hawaii, the Marianas Trench National Monument in the Mariana Islands, and the Northeast Canyons and Seamont Marine National Monuments. In addition to those, all of those that I listed before of grand scale, these maritime uh, national monuments also under consideration uh, is additional dozen or so, well, uh, a I think it looks like 25 here, different areas that also could be reviewed by the Secretary of Interior, even though they were designated with this Presidential and Department of Interior Authority in previous administrations after a great review, they could, by this President and this Interior Secretary, be wiped away very quickly. Now, we definitely do not believe they have, the President, this legal authority, and we will pursue a vigorous fight. But why should we be wasting taxpayers' money when taxpayers' money was already spent to make these designations? And the taxpayer is getting the huge economic benefit of having these outdoor areas. So what else could be on the president's list according to this executive order? The California Coastal National Monument, the Cascade Siskiyou National Monument, President Lincoln Soldier Home National Monument here in Washington, D.C., the Kasha Katu Tents Rock National Monument in New Mexico, the Minidoka National Historic Site in Idaho, the uh, Pompey's Pillar National Monument in Montana, Montana, the Virgin Isles Coral Reef, Governor's Island National Monument in New York, the African Burial Ground National Monument in New York, Fort Monroe National Monument in Virginia, Fort Ord National Monument in California, Chimney Rock National Monument in Colorado, the Cesar Chavez National Monument in Colorado, the San Juan Islands National Monument in the state of Washington, the Harriet Tubman Underground Railroad National Historic Park, the first state national historic uh, park in Delaware, 
the Charles Young Buffalo Soldiers uh, Monument, the Honolulu National Monument, the Pullman National Monument in Illinois, Browns Canyon National Monument in Colorado, Waco Ma uh, Mammoth National Monument in Texas, Castle M Mountain National Monument in California, the Belmont Paul Women's Equity National Monument, Stonewall National Monument in New York, the Birmingham Civil Rights National Monument in Alabama, the Freedom Riders National Monument in Alabama, and the Reconstruction Era National Monument in South Carolina. If I could have that language up again for a second. Where the secretary determines that the designator or expansion was made without, out without public outreach and coordination with relevant stakeholders. His executive order says any of these on the list that I just mentioned, the Secretary of Interior could decide that there was not appropriate public outreach, even though the process defined under the Antiquities Act makes sure that you have that. This secretary could decide there wasn't enough and pull all of these monuments off of our federal list of access to the public for these purposes of recreation and enjoyment. So this administration has it dead wrong. He is no Teddy Roosevelt. In fact, I saw he had a press conference with a statue of Teddy Roosevelt behind it. Teddy Roosevelt would be appalled that he, uh, in his concepts of why preserving federal land was so important. Teddy Roosevelt was an outdoorsman who spent many a time in these great places of our nation and understood their great significance. That's why we have the Antiquities Act, because he knew that these resources strengthened our country. They made us strong as a nation. They showed the crown jewels of the United States of America in all their glory and all their beauty. And he knew it was important to protect it for future generations to enjoy, not just for the special interests to take advantage of in the near term. Now, we have lots of federal land and offshore land that is used for uh, our natural resource exploration. As people know, natural gas is at an all-time high in the United States and driving an all-time low price. It is not as if you need access to Bear's Ear to drive some price of natural gas or other fossil fuel. What you're going to do by pursuing this wrong-headed approach on Bear's Ears is take away one of the historic and beautiful Paleolithic histories of Native Americans and early Americans in the United States, an area that has excellent, excellent outdoor recreation opportunities, and throw it along with it, the concept of the Antiquities Act over the side just because someone wants to try to reverse what previous presidents, started by Teddy Roosevelt, have done to protect things in our national interest. Now, I know, representing a state where we have several counties that have lots of federal land, whether there are forest lands or uh, BLM lands, uh, that it can be challenging for local communities to continue the infrastructure, the education, the hospitals, the law enforcement. And I'm a big believer in making sure that what is called PILT programs and secure rural school programs are well-funded and financed for, by those in uh, the interests of us to make sure that these communities can be there to help us support these public lands. But the notion that we would throw in Teddy Roosevelt's face with one act all of these national monuments and now say that you're going to try to use it in reverse to review the work of 16 different, well, in this case, the near term, probably three different presidents who used this authority is just simply wrong-headed. What we need to do is continue to embrace the outdoor economy. As I said, it's 7 million people with over $800 billion of economic activity. In fact, since the last time they did their report, they've had a $200 billion increase in their economic impact in the United States of America. 
what great news, an industry and sector, particularly in retail, that is growing leaps and bounds, an industry that is providing people with more tools and opportunity to enjoy our beautiful places. The only thing that we can do to screw that up is start taking away the beautiful places for people to go and recreate. I would say we should be examining how well these areas are being used that we have designated and figure out how we can continue to communicate to the general public about these wonderful, wonderful, wonderful experiences. Do not think for one minute that the American people and our souls are not connected to the spiritual nature of these beautiful lands. They are, and that is what Teddy Roosevelt knew. He knew that this is where we go to rejuvenate, so let's not take it away for some oil and gas exploration. I thank the President, and I yield the floor.